the Monday morning broadcast is in effect, people. It's Monday, August 8th. Checking in to see how you're doing. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. And I don't know what you're up to this week, but I hope you're planning today and getting ready for a big week. Because that's what you got to do, man. It's one thing to live life carefree and you only live once and, you know, whatever happens, happens. But if you want to actually accomplish something, you know, maybe put a few shekels in the bank to have for later, you might consider planning your week um, before it starts. Monday's a great time to do that. Some people prefer to do it on Sunday, Sunday night. That way they can wake up Monday morning and be ready to go. I like to just wake up Monday, write out three things I'd like to do for the week, and then I try to do one big thing every day to work towards that goal. Whatever the goal is, it could be to pay your taxes, it could be to write music, set it up in the beginning of the week, map it out, and then make it happen. Whatever the outcome you want to have on Friday, set, start working on it on Monday. That way, by the time you get to Friday, you've got it. But anyway, man, my weekend was pretty good. How was yours? Post in the comments what you did this weekend, if you did anything exciting. Pokemon Go, you know? trip to Mexico? Did you uh, dress up in women's clothing and go for a walk around town? I don't know. One thing I did was I went and saw the new uh, Woody Allen movie called Cafe Society. <laughs> Woody Allen, such a, a great filmmaker. I have no interest in discussing his personal life. I don't know anything about that. Neither do you, neither does anyone. His movie making, his movies are amazing though. And what gets me is he always uses the same like old school jazz music. You know, and Woody's a clarinet player. I think he plays the clarinet. And I read this story once where he was nominated for a Grammy or an Emmy or whatever those, uh, not a Grammy, what would it be? An Oscar maybe? Probably an Oscar. And instead of going to the award show and accepting his trophy, he was at a little jazz club somewhere in New York or LA playing a set of jazz music with his band that he's had for like 40 years. <laughs> Pretty interesting, but the movie was great. It's called Cafe Society, and it uh, uh, was really, really good. Who's the dude? Jesse Eisenberg's in it, and Steve Carroll's in it. I'm a big Michael Scott fan from The Office. Steve Carroll, to me, is one of the funnier people on earth, and uh, it was a great flick, man. Steve Carroll played an older, very wealthy L.A. hotshot entertainment business guy, and Jesse Eisenberg, who I still, every time I see him, I say, Mark Zuckerberg. You know, Jesse was this young uh, up-and-comer guy, his nephew, Steve Carroll's nephew. And it goes through their relationship and, and uh, Jesse's trip to L.A. and meeting girls and falling in love. But what I liked the most was the ending. Woody Allen ends his movie so fantastically that it's... I actually, when it came to the ending, when the ending happened, I said to myself, kind of out loud, I whispered, Oh my God, and I just had this big smile on my face. I won't give it away. You'll have to see it. But he just does a really good job at ending things. A lot of movies, the intro is terrible. Then the movie's kind of good. And then they end it really badly. But anyway, the new Woody Allen movie, uh, Cafe Society, is great. Check it out. That's the first thing. Number two, I woke up this morning, and, and this is just some cautionary advice. I woke up this morning and I saw the news that um, there may be an announcement today, August 8th, about a third party candidate for the presidential election coming up in 100 days or whatever. I saw it on Twitter, some new guy with some Republican backing, the people that hate Donald Trump are trying to maybe throw this guy in the ring to, to offset Donald Trump's chances. Anyway, it was I went down this rabbit hole. I started reading articles about who the guy is. Then I started reading comments and all the arguments. And then I started reading just all this crap. And I had to snap myself out of it. And so I'm going to pre-warn you here. Don't read any of it. Don't worry about any of it. Uh, this The news for the presidential election is a joke. It changes every day. Every day, Donald Trump's in trouble or every day Donald Trump's doing really well, or every day Hillary Trump's going to prison, or every day the, she'll have no charges. Uh, it's, like, it's like some of the best investment advice I ever got was don't pay attention to the day-to-day -day results. When you invest in the stock market, index funds or whatever, there'll be lots of changes over time. 
And people lose money in the stock market because when things are up, they feel great. But when things crash, they sell everything they have. They get terrified. And when it's low, they sell everything. And then when things pick up, they're like, damn, I should have stayed in. And they rebuy when it's high. The point is they react on a day-to-day -day basis and it changes every day. But over the long term, those daily changes don't really matter. If you put your money in here, the thing goes like this. But over time, God willing, you know, it, it always goes up. And the only way to lose money is to sell it when things fall apart, when the stocks are low. And it's the same with the news cycle. Like you can get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day news coverage about the presidential election if you want to, if you need something to do and you feel like being stressed out and having more anxiety and not getting enough sleep at night and feeling like shit all the time. Or you can understand that all these news bites are irrelevant. And over time, none of it's going to matter. You know, if Donald Trump's numbers are up today two points and Hillary's up three points tomorrow, oh, none of that's going to matter. And people get so wrapped up in it. I got a little bit stuck in the rabbit hole today, but I snapped myself out of it. I was like, what in the hell am I doing? Jumped out of bed, brushed my teeth, did some push-ups and started my day. You know, so I, I encourage you to do the same. Forget what you're, forget what's going on. It's all bullshit to steal your eyeballs and your time and your sanity. Just focus on yourself and let's have a killer week. Speaking of having a killer week, um, what I'm doing this morning is setting maybe three goals for the week. I know what one of them is. It has to do with my blog and something that I'm going to start writing about. And it's not that hard. And the thing is, if you start Monday, like today I woke up, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to do one, two, three things this week. That's it. Each thing has about, let's just say for numbers, five steps that I need to do to make it happen. Like for the blog post, it would be research, you know, research, outline, rough draft, write the post, post the post online. That's like the five steps. So I have three goals with five steps each. All I do is say, okay, by the end of the week, I want to accomplish one, two, and three. To do that, I need to do 15 things. So in five days, I need to do three things per day to have all of these done. And I mean, anyone can do three things a day. If three is too much, try two. If two is too much, try one. Even if you can only set one goal for the week and then do one little thing towards it every day, like one goal with five steps. And on Monday, you do one little thing. Tuesday, you do another little thing. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all one little thing. You can get it done. You just have to break. I have to break things down into smaller chunks because stuff like, going to the doctor it'll take me 10 years to actually go to the doctor unless i write write it down as a goal and do the five steps of how i need to get there like number one call and set an appointment number two put it to the calendar number three go to the appointment number four you know whatever it is i have to like convince myself with these simple steps to do uh, just about anything if not i'll put it off for i don't know two three five seven eight nine ten years start your week off right it's Monday. Today, if you're watching this live or when it's initially posted, August 8th, 2016, write down one to three things you want to get done this week. Write down the steps you need to do to get there. And then do one thing a day. You know, if you're feeling really great, do three things a day. You'll be on fire. That'll put you ahead of 90% of the rest of the people on planet Earth who just wake up, you know, roll out of bed, make a bowl of Lucky Charms and have a donut go to work, you know, sleep at their desk, go to happy hour and get drunk and then go home, wake up and do it all again. If you're setting goals on a weekly basis, you blow everyone else's progress out of the water. I know because I did it myself and it happened to me. So that's all I can tell you, man. That's my experience. I hope you're doing well. Let's kick off the week right with a little rock music, do some push-ups, do some jumping jacks, go to the gym, have some coffee, Drink a monster. Hell, have a five-hour energy if you need to. Whatever it takes, man. Let me know what you're up to in the comments. Set a goal for the week and post it below if you feel like it. Or if you're struggling to come up with, with how to pull off what you want to do, post that in the comments and we'll help you. Be sure to like the video. Subscribe if you want to hear more of this stuff. And as always, I will see you, boom, in the future.